Hi, my name's Mike, and just a couple of days ago, one of my favorite all-time planes was what most people would call a complete loss, or at least a total fuselage replacement. Uh, it had crashed and taken out from about here forward, the, the entire motor box and undercarriage for the landing gear. Um, and rather than do a fuselage replacement, in this case, I decided to do the repair. And this instructional video uh, takes us through all of the steps on making that repair. And hopefully, uh, you'll enjoy it and get some tips from it, learn, some, learn a few things, and gain some confidence on making major structural repairs on your own. So before we get started, let's take a look under the hood and see what it looks like now, and then we'll jump right into the repair video. Here's a look from the underside before I slap the covering back on. Uh, you can see that the undercarriage and landing gear platform been re completely rebuilt uh, using aluminum angle running from that former here all the way to the firewall to help distribute that load across the truck system. Uh, it's a very sturdy design, incredibly durable. It turns out that it's lighter than the original design. In fact, I had to move a couple of batteries in the plane to get the CG to work out. And the motor box bottom turned out very well. So let's go ahead and dive into uh, the repair and see exactly what the plane looked like before we started. Let's get this thing over where we can actually work on it. Uh, one of the first things I like to do is go ahead and take the tail section off, the horizontals in this case. We're going to be swinging this thing back and forth uh, and just to keep messing them up and to make things a little bit easier. Also, obviously, the landing gear has got to come off and all this electronics. So I'll take that off and uh, be back in just a couple of minutes and we'll start gutting the inside. I'm going to go ahead and pull this landing gear plate out, uh, get all of this out of the way and we'll just rebuild that. It'll be a lot cleaner um, and a simpler repair anyway rather than having to build around the structure that's already here. There are a few uh, stress fractures there in the main truck system so uh, let's go ahead and get that out of the way and see what we have. Now. We do want to keep these pieces intact best we can because we'll use those as a reference when we're putting our, our landing gear height in, coming up with the landing gear height. So we don't want to just go in and zip wheel all this off. If it was broken, then we would just cut it off and, and kind of reconstruct backwards there. But since we have these walls that are in place and they're in good shape, that locates our landing gear fairly well. So we'll just be careful and take this off without tearing it up. And uh, that'll save us a lot of, a lot of calculation in the long run. I was very fortunate that the landing gear didn't get destroyed in this case, which is rare. Uh, usually, if you look at the fiberglass, or excuse me, the carbon fiber landing gear hard, uh, it wants to delaminate up here in the corners, but this one never touched the ground since it yard darted straight in on the nose. It was running at DA60, and of course, uh, I sent that, the, although the DA turned over well, uh, whenever one goes in hard like that, it's always a good idea to send it to DA and let them go through it. It's, it's worth the trouble in the long run. Okay, so we need to make a piece of wood that we can scab onto the side here that will cover all of this and reinforce all of that, which of course down here is the landing gear, right? So we need a piece that, that basically skins over this whole side, does the same thing on the other side and sticks out enough that uh, ultimately we can cut it off and, and make our motor box out of that. Don't be intimidated. This is very, very easy to do. Uh, it's easy to make a paper template and what I have found is don't try to make the template all in one piece. Just worry about your hard parts first with a single sheet of paper. And uh, a lot of times I take poster paper because it, it just works better. But put a piece up here 
get that out of my mouse while I actually talk. Uh, just put a piece of paper up there and draw a line that that roughly takes the shape of, of that part right there. Take a pair of scissors, cut it out. And then we'll fine tune That looks pretty good there. And that's going to take us way down further than we need. Looks very nice. I'm going to tape that in place right quick so it just doesn't fall out on us. And then we'll just slide a piece of paper up here. And there's a lip right here that sticks down. This, this firewall here piece sticks down just a little bit. So we'll need a notch. And it feels like it's a, about a half an inch. So we'll cut about a half inch notch out right here. Let's see if that does it for us. That looks very nice. And that looks like that's going to do that. So I'm going to take a Sharpie, go to the inside here. We're fortunate that we can get to the inside and kind of trace out where that truck system is now. <clears throat> that looks like it will do it. Gently pull it off. So I'm going to pull our two sheets apart. And before they come apart, let's tape them up real good. And that's what it ends up looking like. This piece here will obviously extend out another five or six inches. And of course that's the, the uh, motor box there. So what I'm trying to determine now is if we do need to follow this line, which is the existing truck system, or can we kind of trust that across right there to give us a little more strength? We can cut some uh, lightning holes on it in there to uh, lighten it up. So weight's not going to be an issue for us. Luckily, as I was bringing this over to the bandsaw to cut it out, I realized that we need to extend this out straight so that it can hit the bottom of the firewall there and just give us a little more support on that firewall. Of course, the motor box is hanging out here, but the firewall is here, and we won't have anything to attach that firewall to down here on the bottom since we're pulled all, we have pulled all that out. So we'll just extend this piece out there, and it can attach very well to that firewall. So let's cut our piece out here. Way overkill on our bandsaw blade, but I don't feel like changing it. We'll just deal with it.
Let's come off a little bit on the top side. that that looks good it's a good tight fit that's gonna work for us and now we can mark the areas that we can lose for weight wherever it's not tying into the existing truck system it's just extra weight that we don't need Okay. So it was difficult to get to this area, but this one here, this area, we we're fortunate enough that we can get to very easily. And we know that these lines run, they're just extensions of, of that, so we can just extend those out. From here, I know that that is the front and that is the back, so. We can do this. Okay, so our landing gear fits here. So we want to we don't want a good bit of meat here, but this up here is just extra. So I think that's a good spot for us to put some lightning holes here. Get rid of some of that weight. And looks similar to this at this area out and this area and leave that of course we need to maintain that corner there and I think that'll work pretty good this is the template that we just made, and this is just a piece of uh, hardwood stick. It doesn't matter what it's made out of. I just ran this from a piece of, of scrap walnut. And it doesn't really matter how large it is. It can be a larger piece or a smaller piece. It doesn't matter. The bearing on the router flush bit is going to ride against this. Uh, it's just convenient for me to use this larger piece because it kills two birds with one stone for this piece too. So we will... We'll, just real roughly cut this out. Need a piece that long. This doesn't have to be exact by any means at all. It can be over length. We'll put that one there. We need a short one for up here.
Uh, but it, it makes absolutely no difference at all. Remember, it's inside the plane. Nobody's ever going to see it. And we're just doing this to lighten things up. So why don't we go like this. bearing will ride that corner nicely. There we go. And we can even sand that off a little bit. Good to go. Let's go cut it out on the router. All right, I think that's going to work out pretty good. Let's cut the lightning holes out, get the dust collector on. Whoops, let's go ahead and uh, adjust that bit height. We want that bearing to run somewhere on that piece of hardwood. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be exactly in the center. Now that'll do it. Lock the router in. Okay, so I know it's an area of the template that I want to modify. So I went ahead and put some, uh, just some scrap hardwood blocks in there. I just CA them in. And that way the router bearing won't go as far down and it, it leave us a lot more meat in there to uh, epoxy that piece of three quarter by three quarter aluminum angle there. Probably would have been okay coming down that far. It doesn't have to, to be exact by any means. It's just gonna look a little cleaner and give us a little more strength for that epoxy room. There's one other thing that I want to do the fuselage while we're preparing it for our piece that we're going to scab inside. And that is to get rid of any redundant pieces that ultimately we're not going to need. If you'll recall, our patch already has the X braces in it and it fills all of this area here. So most of this will become redundant. Of course, that X brace will, will not be needed. I'll cut that out. I'll cut out a good bit of this support here that used to go to the old landing system. We're not using that sort of system anymore, so it's, it's really redundant now, and we can get rid of much of it. I will probably get rid of a good chunk here in the center. You can see where I've marked it with a green Sharpie there. Uh, there's absolutely no need for that to be there. We, If you can see, there are some braces that go to the, the outer skin of the fuselage there. We'll need to keep enough meat there to support those, but I'll probably take some of this here as well because all that is redundant, of course, because our new scab piece 
is going to have all of that. And it's actually stronger and lighter than the existing parts. So let's take out anything that we don't need. We'll probably lose close to an ounce up there by the time it's all done. Okay, this looks like a really good spot to end this video. Uh, we've got everything cleaned up and ready to install our part, so let's go ahead and stop here. It's about 27 minutes, and in the second episode, we'll make the part uh, and actually clamp it in, get it, get it glued up inside the fuselage, and probably even finish mounting the motor and get everything wrapped up in the second episode. So I will see you in episode two of the Yak Repair.